Okay, so what is your plan? Uh, going back to the scene of the crime to see if we can find the surviving members. We should call them the Cornered Rats. Okay. You know how they say the 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 uh, perpetrator always returns to the scene of the crime, right? You know how horrible of an idea that is for me, right? But I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll do the same thing we did with the fire truck thing. I'll I'll just kind of stay in the back. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's just to play the part of the muscle, you know, that I'm not walking in. You know, it's very suspicious. So I'm just walking around doing everything on my own. I'm trying to be this big, ominous individual. Um, you know, I I gotta play the part. I gotta have backup. I gotta have contacts. You know, it's it's all about the theater. And yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put I'll make my long sword like real prominent, and I'll uh, oh no that that has make. Well, so the scabbard isn't distinctive. Only the sword is, right? Sorry, what? The family Van Dun family blade. The scabbard yeah, isn't. Wouldn't dist- have the scabbard because uh, what's his face wouldn't have kept it. Yeah, so I'd I'd make the long sword one made for it. I'd I'd wear I like I'd wear the long sword somewhere really visible, and then I I well I guess I probably would have had it pretty visible before. Ugh. Um, how, how about you don't take the scythe or the light pick with you? I I'm not carrying the scythe. I don't carry that anymore. You specifically you... said you had the scythe with you. I had the light pick. No, I it's... asked you. You said I have my scythe and my light pick, but you used your punching dagger. Oh, uh, well, I didn't have the scythe. That was my bad. Well, h- how about you don't take either big weapon with you? I don't think I even own the scythe anymore. Oh, no, there it is. It's in my stashed list. Uh, you know what? Can I? We, we're in, like, the district, right? I can I can put my stuff away. Like how long? How long do we want to take with this? I think it's just a bad idea for me to go back there in general. Yeah, it's uh, probably ten or eleven by the time you guys regroup, discuss your strategy, and head back up there. So it's getting super late. Yeah, but we also have to find them before they leave town. Look, if you really don't want to come, then Bob's gonna say you don't have to come. He just thought, you know. Yeah, no, it's not? a bad idea. Okay, Ralph and I can do this. So it'll be Ralph and I heading over uh, to where the murder took place to see if we can find those cornered rats. Okay, so you guys head back up to the gate? Yes. Without Ivan. Okay, when you guys get to the gate, you can give me a perception check. Ralph? Oh, good job. Nice. Okay. Guys, uh... Search around the area, you see no signs of uh, the three uh, dead rats. There is a huge crowd around the uh, horribly impaled body on the ground. Um, what's the word on what happened there? No one knows for sure. But um, the three guys that were with him that ran from the scene, uh, they were screaming about assassins. Man, what do you have to do around here to get an assassination put out on you? Yeah, it's a bit, it's been the same. You, You must be in some bad stuff. Are you saying that? Yep. 
Okay, you want to give me a diplomacy check? I'll eat him. Good, because I don't have any diplomacy. Get a plus four. Nice. You don't have anything in diplomacy? Correct. Not even synergies from, like, bluff and sense motive? I have synergy from it, I think. I just didn't put it in. But I, don't, I didn't put any ranks in it, is what I was saying. No, that's fair, but you have a decent charisma. Two for bluff, two for sense motive. You get two for knowledge nobility. I don't have knowledge nobility. As the former count's son. Okay. Um, yeah, I clearly had no interest in the family business and or... <laughs> My distaste for our family started long before it fell. Fair enough. Um, when you uh, make comments like that, um, one of the... Uh, one of the uh, guards uh, says, I think these are the guys that were involved in that uh, robbery last night. Um, they uh, are friends of the dead guy. So do you think it's a cover up? Like someone trying to silence anybody that knows stuff about it? Um, I don't really have a theory at the moment, and I'm not the investigator. But my guess is this is some kind of payback for whatever they did. Like uh, the other guy um, had distinguishing marks that this guy also has. Um, and it ties back to the, uh, attack on the caravan and the missing goods. Um, there have been some questions about, uh, the validity of the items stolen and, uh, how, uh, shady this caravan was in the first place so if this was something some kind of smuggling thing that went wrong um, they were probably killed because they broke the chain of command ah no one hires a professional assassin to kill a street thug without sending a message yeah And whoever very did, enlightening. Whoever Was not did aware this, of that. Uh, absolutely destroyed this guy. Well, I guess he should be thankful it was a quick death. It was an incredibly quick death. He must not have been looking for any kind of information then, huh? Just pure revenge, maybe? I don't know. Scary is what it is. I think the motive is revenge, but like I said, I'm not the investigator. I'll give all the information to the detective, and he can uh, file the reports. Well, these are still criminals, right? Or are they still on the loose? Or have you guys caught Speak them? into the mic. Sorry. Uh... These guys are still criminals, though, right? Are they still on the loose? Have you guys caught them yet? Well, there are no direct ties at the moment to cri criminal activities. There are known local uh, ruffians and whatnot, but uh, there's no charges pending at the moment, so there was no reason to hold them at the gate.
Okay, I see. Well, as long as they haven't done anything evil, then I guess that's good. Said is getting scarier and scarier. So they did talk and they did let him go. Um. Did they at least leave town then, if they're afraid of assassins, or are they? Well, they left through the northern gate. Uh, where they went from there, I don't know. Um, but they seemed terrified, so I would assume that they just kept running. I guess it's possible they could uh, circle around to another gate. They had valid ID, so they can come and go uh, from the city as they please. We're in Navari, right? No, you're in Ionia. Wow. You're in the northern district? Not okay. Exactly north of Adria? That's where the gate is. So we're in Ionia, so they went to the north gate, so they're leaving the city. Okay. I, I just want to make sure they weren't heading into Adria. Dang. Um. Well, they're on foot. It's not like they're going to be able to get a wagon at this time of night. They're on foot, and it's 10 o'clock at night. Unless they're on a night cycle, they're probably not going to make it far before they're going to need to rest regardless. So they're staying somewhere. Um, maybe we should check the pottery place. Do you think they would just circle back? Like, they're going to the safe house to rest. We don't know of any other option here, do we? And I think we should check the playhouse regardless. There's not really a good reason not to. What do you think, Ralph? Uh, odds are, do you think they would have just panicked and left the city on foot, or do you think they'd try and get a, try and find a place to stay for the night and leave in the morning? Uh, well, a couple things. Rats abandon ship when it's sinking. And B, people go to places they know. Problem is, we don't know what they know. We don't know where their hideouts are. Where the they probably dipped into a sewer. Let that leads to outside the gates, is my guess. Yeah. I think finding them in a time frame that is doable for us is unlikely. Which means we're going to have to abandon this option. I mean, we don't have a time frame that we know of in character. Yeah, in character, you don't have any idea what's going on. Um... Oh, I thought this was another one of those you got 24 hours to figure it out, then if yeah, you don't get them back in 24 48 hours... 48 hours not... out of character, but we have not been told of any time limit. In you character. guys have not gotten to the part where you get the information on when the transaction for the gems is going to happen, so you don't know when the transaction for the gems are going to happen. Once the transaction happens, the gems are gone. Okay, yeah, that's... I'm confused. I thought they said the transaction already happened. No, the theft already happened. Then they were handed off to the veil... And the veil I, I thought was... that's what the transaction was. No, nope, the veil was just a handoff. So maybe we can use. This so the here. veil didn't ask for these. They're just a middleman. Yeah, the, from what Paul got, they took all of the stuff that was of value for the gang, but they didn't have anyone who could move the gems. So they handed them off to the Vale, and they took a small cut on it, and then the Vale is moving the gems. 
Ah, I thought the Vale requested this be done. No, the, uh, all of the indications you've had so far is that they happened across these gems that were being transported on this uh, caravan. Okay. Who gave us this job? Goldfinger gave it to you. Or Goldface. When uh, when do we meet back up with Goldface? Because normally there's an appointed time, but if it's open-ended, then he would have to have given us a way to return the gems to him if we get them. Yeah, you just send word to him. How do we send word to him? I don't know. We've been playing for four levels. You have a way to send word to him. Okay. Um. Okay, so actually, the misinformation we have seeded starts to take on a life of its own with these rumors. We can probably use this. We can probably reach out to Olaf now, see if we can contact his contact in the Vale of Society, let them know that there's a situation here involving some stolen items they're trying to, um, they have in their possession. Uh, and that, and there's a bounty hunter that's lo- that's going after them for it. Uh, the original owner of the party is willing to take back possession of them to call off the bounty. But we need the gems quickly before the bounty hunter goes after the members in the Vale Society. Do you think that story would work? Are you asking? I mean, I'm not there. Well, before we talk about this, we would have left the guard area. Yeah, I mean, uh, we kind of got what we needed from there. All right. Uh, well, I why would Olaf care what happens to the Veiled Society? Probably not the Veiled Society directly, but his contact. That's his source of info. So he'll say, hey, thanks for that. And then he will privately, without ever letting us know, contact his, his informant and say, hey, watch out. But he has no reason to give us any information there. And moreover, he'd probably look into it and steal the gems for himself. He could, but we, we don't have to tell him the full story. We can just tell him we uh, we can just tell him as much as he needs to know to be willing to help us. Why would he, I, I still don't understand why he'd be willing to help us? Because we have use. Right, like that's kind of what he does. He helps. Well, us what are what are we him. offering to do for him that would make him want to help us? But that's kind of the thing. He he helped us last time by giving us the or no, it wasn't him. Um, because that hurt House Rodimus. Uh, yeah. This is we're telling him that the Veiled Society is hurting already, and if you want to make it stop, give us the information to where the gems are. I don't I mean, understand what, what is what his incentive is here. For him, it's probably to do us a favor, in which case we might owe him a favor. So, uh, so like, I we'd have to explicitly tell him that we'd have to say, "Hey, if you tell us this, we will owe you a favor." Are we okay with that? I just want I just want to speak to the contact. I don't want him to run middleman. I want him to set up a meeting. And him, with yeah, him setting up that meeting would be our our favor because presumably the contact works yeah. for him. Or you just tell them the truth, that we want to steal from the Veiled Society, because then our then our interests align, right? Yeah, that might make more sense. Mm. Um, he probably asked us to pay for the information, or or give him some favor for the information. Um, That's true. Before we do any of that, we should go check out that clay house. Maybe there's clues in there. Okay. Yeah, we can check out the playhouse. The playhouse, the pottery house. I'm sorry, what the hell are you checking out? The pottery house hideout that they went to. So I so I guess the timeline got changed. I'm confused. So they, they all, the first three left the in the tavern. Well, the the last only one... thing that changed was that I was mistaken about what time it was when it happened, but you got the job at dusk, you met up with the contact four hours later, which means it would have been around 10, 9 or 10 when you met up with him, 
So that would have been the time that they left the tavern and headed over to the pottery shop. The pottery shop would not be open at that time, so instead of it being a very casual interaction, it would require the owner to come and unlock the door. Is that what Ralph saw? Yeah, Ralph, when I originally described it, I said they just went there and picked it up, which was accurate. But when he asked backup questions, like, yeah, people were coming and going. Uh, but people weren't coming and going. The shop was closed. They showed up with the owner, opened the door, grabbed their stuff, and then the owner left. Okay, yeah, so we should check out the pottery house. And if that doesn't turn up anything, then we can start begging Olaf for scraps. But I don't like that for multiple reasons. Uh, there is an option. We could try talking to the bishop. I don't know how negatively this um, raid on the caravan is, but one of his guys did buy products from it. So he may not be too happy if this is going to blow up in his face somehow. He might be willing to lend a hand. Fair. Just an option. Yeah, I think if we had more evidence, we might be able to use the bishop. It's just hard to judge on, like, since thieving is our their thing, but... the an unsanctioned theft or a sloppily done theft may not reflect well. Yeah. Being that one person died, at least one of the attack one of the attackers died. I don't know if any of the guards died. Being that they were not weren't on the slab, I guess maybe not. But and also, was the old woman probably not? But fair enough. So at the very least, it sounds like since I see we're coming up to the end of the the session, the plan is for us to go to the pottery house, check it one last time, and then meet with Olaf unless we get some information. You're going to the pottery us. shop at night or in the morning? Yeah, at night. Okay, well, if you go to the pottery shop at night, it's a closed building. Yeah. I mean, we, we can pick locks and be stealthy. I think... Well, I guess, again, I guess we don't incare... Well, so if we know that for some reason goons went to the pottery shop, then we're going to have to go to normally inaccessible areas of the pottery shop one way or another. Do we want to just break in or, you know, uh, sneak in with lockpicking and all that? Or do we want to try and finagle the shop owner into letting us see those areas by saying we're dead rat gang members or something? Because either way works, but um, I... I assume that whatever we're looking for isn't going to be an open view if this is a hideout of some sort. If the old man knows us, it's going to be harder to disguise past him. So there is that aspect of it. Why would um, you know us? Isn't this the guy that we knew as kids? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, how well did we know him? Like, I rather how well, like, how often we did we interact with him? I mean, if we ran the place when we were kids and we have stories about him and whatnot, I'm assuming he knows us pretty well. Either way, he gets a bonus to the disguise. So, I mean, and we don't know what kind of security he has. I, Probably these, uh, I don't think they're going to have great security if it's just a hideout for some some uh, dead rat thugs. Or, uh, yeah, dead rat thugs. Try it at night. I don't see a benefit to trying to talk to him. But yeah, we'll do that. If we get any intel that lets us talk to the bishop, we'll do that. Otherwise, we'll go to Olaf in the morning. Does that sound like the plan? Makes sense to me. Sounds good.
I'm jealous of Ivan. He can just solve all his problems with, uh, with violence. And I want to try and solve it without it. Because it's so much nicer, what? so much more cathartic. I, I wasn't planning to, to no, uh, uh, I'm, assassinate I'm, 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 the old man or anything. I didn't believe that. I didn't believe you were until you said that. Now I'm 100% confident you were. I mean, it's a lot of affiliation bonus, but it only goes so high, you know? Okay, what are you doing next? Well, I think we're running up to where we have to call it. Yeah, if you guys want to call it, that's fine. I just wanted to know what the plan was. Oh, uh, uh, I think the plan is to, at night, before we rest, we'll break into the pottery shop. If we find anything that lets us go to the bishop, we'll do that. Otherwise, in the morning, we'll go to all off and see if we can set up a meeting with his contact. Okay, well, breaking into the pottery shop is not an issue, so you can do that. It's a pottery shop. Nothing of significance um, there. Ideally, we try and see if we can find a storage location of any more contraband. Okay, well, you can search the pottery shop. There's nothing there. Okay, well, that's what we got. Cool. On to Olaf in the morning. Okay, what is your plan with Olaf? So we want to just tell them the truth. We want to rob the Veil Society. Is that what we want to do? As far as, as what I know of Olaf, I think that's a little more, uh, a little more practical. Okay. Then I, I guess I would ask to meet with Olaf and see, uh, bluntly speaking, if he's willing to set up a meeting with this contact in the Veil Society. Okay, you want to roll a diplomacy check? Twenty-nine. Um, his uh, question is, what's in it for me? That is kind of the question I was afraid he was going to ask. Um, Who could have imagined this? Well, he never answered that question. Because uh, we can't give him any... A sp and even the split we're getting from this isn't worth his time. Um, Can I answer that next session? No, that's totally fine. You can answer it whenever you want. I was just wondering uh, what your plan was, because he doesn't have any real incentive to out his contact, and um, you're right, the job doesn't really pay enough Like uh, that you probably want to blow a huge amount of money buying him off. But figure out yeah. uh, what you're willing to trade with him, because that'll be a factor. Whether it's gold or something else you can come up with. Um, Next time we get a job to rob him, we'll turn it down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that that might be a high incentive. You fucked him out of uh, fifteen hundred gold pieces, so yeah, we'll have to. I'll have to phrase it a bit better, but that that is a good one. Actually, I don't think he paid fifteen hundred. I think he only paid eleven hundred for the stallion, but he lost his eleven hundred and the stallion, so uh, that was pretty brutal. Oh, you guys stole the uh, ribbon from him too. What an IOU! <laughs> Good. Like basically, what what Ralph just said. If, if we're actually stealing from him that much, I forgot about the ribbon, the thing we never looked at. Yeah, that's fair. Like, um, he doesn't know specifically that you did either job. You bluffed your way through the ribbon, even though he 
was really sure it was you. Um, and you guys didn't leave any obvious signs of when you stole the uh, horse. Obviously, you guys would be the prime suspects in that since it was your family's item. Um, but you clearly aren't keeping it in your fucking uh, white trash apartment. That's actually really funny. I guess if you're gonna re you're gonna phrase it, you could say, "Hey, we kind of hear things about thefts going on, and uh, next time we hear one that involves him, uh, we'll give him a heads up." Uh, yeah. If we give him a heads up, that means we're betraying Goldface. Do we want to do that if we spent all this time basically? Going now we're betraying the guy that's who's actually gonna have to try steal it. You're also betraying Goldface because if you hear about the mission and then turn it down, you are ratting out his other uh, other teams. And if you take the mission and then fail on it, you're affecting your reputation. But it's up to you. There are, there are probably ways you could play both sides of the fence if you're if you really think about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's gonna take some creativity to get around this, but I definitely think there's a way to do it. Yeah, everything has a solution. It's just what you come up with. I try to tell this to players all the time. There is no correct answer, and there are always consequences. It's just whether or not the consequences are something you can live with. Sometimes the consequences are good, like you murder a guy in cold blood in the middle of the street. Nobody realizes who did it, and some imaginary revenge scenario gets blamed for it. I love that. It's so great. I get the dark vision perk now. <laughs> you get the what? Uh, I got high enough on the uh, table to get the permanent dark vision. Permanent dark vision? Dark vision is a permanent effect, yep. Oh, yeah. I haven't even looked at the table since I wrote it. Nice. Yeah, dark vision as a permanent effect is really nasty. Maybe I need to kill someone. Uh, Ivan, can you take over the next, uh, you know, talk and I'll kill the next person? Yes. Yes. Yes, and do it just as effectively. Plus My two brother. to stealth, plus two to fortitude saves, plus two to damage with daggers, cast no light twice a day, plus one to attack with daggers, twice per day, reroll one of your initiative checks. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Cast Slay Living and all daggers gain the sharpness quality. They're all really nasty perks. Yeah. Slay Living's kind of bad for me because my DC is going to suck, but all the other ones are really awesome. Yeah, but at, obviously the DC doesn't change, but at 11th level it becomes Circle of Death, and at 13th level it becomes Finger of Death. Oh, right. You, uh, if it's a touch attack, then they get a, pe a save penalty, right? Uh, well, they... Minus four. In, in your rules, it's like minus four, you said? Slay Living specifically says because it's a touch attack, you get a minus four on it. Okay, yeah. so that makes it not as awful. And plus, I have luck, so I potentially luck down their save. Yeah, between the minus four and your luck bonus, that in itself is plus ten. Yeah, Slay Living is actually a terrible spell. Having to touch someone to do the spell and then it still has a save is awful. That's actually why I put the minus four in there um, for all those things, because you cast Cure Light Wounds and you get a Cure Light Wounds. So when you cast an Inflict Light Wounds, you might only get half an Inflict Light Wounds. And you have to touch the guy. And be adjacent to him in combat while casting a spell. I'm going to be honest. The minus four, which stacks with Intimidate is why that is my six level spell for Titus. What is your six level spell? Slay Living. Just because so I can intimidate them as a move or a swift. And then if that goes off, when I do Slay Living, they get a minus eight penalty. Nice. Yeah, that's a good combo. And it bypasses contingency. I'm so looking forward to that against those nasty assholes. Yeah, that is absolutely amazing because it is a death effect. It isn't a hit point effect. 
that was one of the things I said to you guys when you were whining about how broken contingency was. I was like, then don't do hit points of damage to them. Use things that kill them without doing damage. Yeah, because it's a touch attack, I don't have to worry about the spell turning if they have it. I just have to worry about spell resistance. But it's been fun. Hope you guys have a good night. Okay, I'll catch you later. Anyone else got any night. questions? Um, I still need stuff for the Beguiler for uh, the Triangle game. Is that this Friday? That is this Friday. Um, I have to go to Grand Prairie tomorrow. Uh, so I don't know how much time I'm going to have to do prep. But as soon as I get the opening adventure done, I will work on the Beguiler. Um, can you remind me, uh, in your general annoying tone to do it over and over again? Sure. Just so I Only because you asked. Only because I asked. <laughs> I'm going to be that guy. No, it really just comes down to, I'm sitting around trying to decide which one I want to, what thing I want to do. And I have this problem all the time is I finish playing like, now that I've finished playing this game, I want to work on this game. But I don't need anything for this game. I need to work on the next game. So I end up like drifting from task to task, going, yeah, I'll do this or I'll do that. And then I get to the end and I was like, shit, I should have done all of these things instead. But like I said, uh, my wife's gone away for five days, so I should have lots of time this weekend to do lots of stuff. Um, anything I don't get done before the game I can do after the game and my general philosophy for the DM is at fault is you get to do whatever you want that's why Joe's uh, druid was so much more ridiculous than anyone else's is because I had all these cool ideas for how I was going to work in outer planar creatures and whatnot, and he got to 6th level and I still hadn't done it so I just sort of hand waved it and said, you take this and this. And then he got to 10th level and 12th level and 15th level. And eventually he's like a solar or whatever the hell he was at the end. Um, and he didn't have to really do anything to get it because I just was so busy prepping for that game that I never got a chance to finish the Druid thing. The only thing I really need to know is the bonus feats. Um, also, what Bashaba's what Bashaba's affiliation does if we're doing that? Uh, yeah, I'll have to uh, work on that. Uh, I didn't know how gung ho you were going to be about being a follower of Bashaba. I I like well, so I want some sort of uh, fate or chance themed god, and probably not a good one considering my character is supposed to be a bit slimy and uh, um, manipulative. So, probably Bishaba? No, I, I'm fine with it. I just wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page. Because, like I said, Matt was a little uh, leery about playing in a game with a chaotic evil character. And I had the same opinion. I was like, Ugh. Is Bishaba vile or is she uh, an archic? Yeah, so I, I was leaning to more towards the anarchic thing. Like, it's, it's my character is very much like a... Uh, um, seize seize the opportunity or like um you, you have to write your own destiny sort of thing um and he that's he's act, actively encouraging um the the berserker the barbarian guy to do that or at least that's what i imagine their interaction will be like i haven't we haven't started playing yet um so that that's sort of like he he's not trying to screw over the barbarian he's trying to encourage him towards glory and like i said ride on his coattails and like he's not doing it because it's good for the barbarian but he thinks it is good for the barbarian and he just plans to benefit from it as well i have no idea why bashaba is so incredibly detailed um but i'm just gonna check my notes the Sting of Fate. I think I have at least some of it done. And by some of it, I named it. So I definitely have to work on that one. 
But I just dropped the Bishaba Dogma into the uh, Triangle of Strife. Okay, you good to go? Yep. Okay, I'll catch you later.